everyone. Welcome to worship on this the Sunday after Easter, another beautiful day outside, a bit chilly, but beautiful blue skies. Uh, it's lovely to have you in worship and lovely to have some of our young ones again this morning, looking very Easterish with lovely yellow bows, very nice indeed. So a warm welcome to you all to worship today. Um, a big thank you to Rosemary and Bee who did some last minute adjustment of music because yep, poor um, Rosemary had a, an accident with her thumb yesterday and we, anyone who's had an accident with a thumb knows how important they are generally, but for playing in particular. So it's great to see uh, Rosemary is here to play, but Bee's also got some music electronically just to, uh, to give Rosemary a wee bit of a rest. And can I mention, of course, since uh, this week has seen the death of um, the Duke of Edinburgh, that at the end of the service, after the benediction, I would invite you to stand and we'll listen to the music of um, the national anthem in tribute both to him and his service and support of our Queen, our country and our Commonwealth. So that's after the, after the benediction. And then again, I'll lead the way out and stewards will invite you to leave row by row at the end. Let's begin our service by listening to the music of another Easter hymn, hymn 416, Christ is alive, let Christians sing, his cross stands empty to the sky. Let us unite our hearts as a family in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we are glad to be together in this place, in an atmosphere of worship and praise, affirming your goodness and mercy, enjoying a sense of fellowship with brothers and sisters here and across the area through our website worship and across the whole world through the embrace of your Holy Spirit. We praise you, Lord God, for a night's rest, for the light of a new day, for the blessings of the resurrection and the blessings of ordinary life in terms of our shelter and food, our families and friends, and all the possibilities and pleasures of daily life. We praise you for the variety of human experiences open to us and for every sign of your involvement in the life of your world. We praise you for drawing near to us, particularly in the life of Jesus, and we find encouragement and inspiration in his teaching and example of love. Heavenly Father, as we look to Jesus, we are aware of our own weaknesses. We are often lukewarm in our love for you and for our brothers and sisters in your family. We sometimes waver in our commitment to Christian discipleship, sometimes drifting from the path walked before us by Jesus. Renew and revitalize our faith and love and service through the working of your Holy Spirit and prepare us for whatever the new week will bring. Grant us a fresh infilling of your spirit of love and wisdom, 
so that we may honour you in all we think and say and do in the coming days. And in unity with all your people, in different traditions and different languages and cultures, we pray the words of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. And now Chris is going to read for us this morning from John's Gospel, another resurrection encounter. Morning, everyone. Our reading this morning comes from John chapter 20, reading from verse 1, the empty tomb. Early on the first day of the week, whilst it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over, and he looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been round Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, I, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me. For I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to these readings of his holy word. Thank you very much, Chris. And now we're going to listen to uh, another hymn, hymn number 425, The Saviour Died But Rose Again. It comes from Romans uh, chapter 8, and just saying that there isn't anything in death or life that can ever separate us from the love of God. Uh, hymn 425, The Saviour Died But Rose Again, Triumphant O'er the Grave.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> it's, this is kind of one of those times of the year when you realise everybody's heard the sermon before, because around Christmas you're talking about the same sort of things, around Easter, of course, we'll look at different resurrection encounters. Um, but then as I thought about it, we weren't even here last Easter. It's not terrible to think we weren't actually in the building for our Easter worship last year. So it's good to be back again. But this is one of the times that ministers who've been in, in position for quite some time realise I'm probably saying the same sorts of things that I've said year in, year out. But the message, of course, doesn't um, get less important or less good because you've heard the message before. It's all about people seeing, meeting, encountering the risen Christ, and then how that impacted on their life. If we read again the four gospel accounts of the resurrection, we'll see that the women were central to the first discovery of the empty tomb. And they were the ones who first heard the news that they shouldn't be looking in the place of the dead for Jesus, because he was alive again. Although the list of the woman who went to the tomb varies between the different Gospels, we're not surprised to hear, though, that it was some of the women closest to Jesus who went at the earliest opportunity to anoint his body, for they loved him dearly. And this was a practical way that usually the woman of the family would show both their love and their grief. On their discovery of the empty tomb, they rushed back to tell the disciples about what they'd seen and heard, bringing a message which surely showed their confusion of grief and hope. While they cried, they've taken away the Lord and we don't know where they have laid them, laid him, they also clung to the more reassuring message, he is not here, he is risen. Some of the men then went to check out their story, maybe at first thinking the woman had got it wrong. After all, they were in a highly distressed state. Maybe they were a wee bit hysterical. Maybe they'd gone to the wrong tomb. Uh, Maybe they were a bit confused. And so some of the men, at least Peter and John, went to look. And the woman had in fact been right. The stone was no longer blocking the entrance to the burial cave, And there was no body in the tomb, nor any sign of the soldiers who had been guarding it from the Friday night. Puzzled and still distressed, they returned to the safety of the home in which they were staying together. No doubt there was much hushed and awed discussion throughout that day. What does it all mean? What's happened? Where is he? But John's Gospel gives us a little more detail about one of the women, Mary Magdalene, a woman described as one who'd received considerable healing from Jesus and who was possibly also the woman who, in grateful love, had earlier anointed Jesus' feet with expensive perfume in the home of Simon the Pharisee. Mary Magdalene was the one who lingered longest around the empty tomb, too grief-stricken to leave the place where he'd been laid to rest. As she looked into the cave again, she suddenly saw two men with a shining appearance and repeated to them the message taken earlier to the disciples. They've taken away the Lord. I don't know where they've laid him. Turning around, she saw a man outside the cave whom she thought was the gardener. Maybe he could help her. He would know. He'd have been there since the early hours. He would know. If you've moved, my Lord, please tell me where you've laid him. In the early light, no doubt with eyes swollen by her many tears, she couldn't see clearly his face. And it was only when he spoke her name, Mary, that she recognised his voice. Who can imagine her overwhelming joy to discover that Jesus was not dead, but alive? Of course she wanted to embrace him, to hold on to him and never let him go again. However, Jesus said that wasn't what she was to do. She had a different task. 
to go and tell the disciples that he had risen and he would meet them again. And so her message changed from, they've taken away my Lord and we don't know where they've laid him, to the message, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. What an amazing message to be entrusted with. Later in that same day, other disciples and followers of Jesus were also blessed with an encounter with the risen Christ and so were able to follow Mary's example of sharing the message with others that they too had seen and heard the risen Lord. He isn't dead, he's alive again. We've seen him, we've walked with him and talked with him. He shared a meal with us. We cannot explain how this can be, but we know it's happened because we've seen him. He is really alive. This inexplicable event and encounter led them to an even deeper realization who Jesus was. Not just another special prophet or teacher, but in some way, the Son of God. Not exactly the Messiah they had expected, but truly the Son of God. And this event and encounter changed their lives totally around. And they went out and said, we have seen the risen Lord. And they challenged others to find out for themselves how the living Christ could change their lives too. And so the Christian faith has spread across the generations and across the world as a result of the resurrection of Jesus and through the message that Mary first passed down on. I have seen the Lord. The generations since the time of the crucifixion and resurrection have not been able to see the Lord in the same way that the first Mary and the other woman and the early disciples and Cleopas and his friends saw him. We haven't even been able to see Jesus in the same way that Saul saw him on the road to Damascus. However, we have encountered him alive too, in the touch of his living spirit in our lives, in the witness of the scriptures, and in the witness of those who have believed and rejoiced and followed the risen Lord before us. We have seen the Lord. Although we were not physically present with the first witnesses to the resurrection, we are blessed to live in the post-Easter era. And in joyful faith, we too have the wonderful message to pass on to others, that we have experienced the risen Lord Jesus in our own lives. With eyes of faith, we have seen the Lord. Christ is indeed risen. He is risen indeed. And year by year, and Sunday by Sunday, as we celebrate the resurrection, that is the same message we proclaim. We have seen the living Lord. Amen. And now we're going to enjoy a, a solo with B singing for us.
much B. It's a long time um, since I've sung that one, and because I knew you were singing it, I, I had to drive down to Ayr to do some official, official business on Friday, and I sang, I sang it, probably it was mostly the chorus, because I couldn't remember all the verses, sang it all the way down, and on the way back I thought, I'd better try and sing a different hymn. Uh, but thank you for bringing it back to my uh, memory. Uh, thank you, B. And now I'm going to share with you a, a poem. I'm not very good at my poetry or finding interesting poetry, but I uh, just thought I'd have another poem. And it, it, it's related to Easter, but if you listen carefully, there's a wee touch of Christmas in it too. And it's called The Angels Kept Silent by Danette Ketwich. Away up the hillside my Saviour was led, my humble Lord Jesus with thorns on his head. The angels above looked down on his way, but they kept silent as they watched him that day. They watched as the beam was dropped in a hole, wings trembled in rage and made thunder roll. Not long ago, they had watched above where he lay. They rejoiced as the saviour was placed in the hay. But this time they watched silent. They didn't rejoice. They didn't echo in harmonious voice. Did they wait in their legions, a single word to be said, one word to prompt a rescue archangel led? Did they know this way was God's eternal plan? From the sword in his side to the spikes in his hand, the angels kept silent as he cried, it is done. Did they weep as if the enemy had just won? As the Messiah was placed into the grave, did they comprehend the plan for human souls to save? Three days passed as they watched that stony place. The death shroud then fell, they looked upon his face. Heaven could no longer hold back their voice, their silence was broken, in harmonious rejoice. Hallelujah, he is risen. He has risen from the dead. He is alive, he is alive, just as he said. Death has no victory. Death has no sting. For Christ is alive. He's the eternal King. Amen. Let's listen again to another hymn, hymn 412, The Strife is O'er, The Battle Done. there's one sign that we know in this church it must be hallelujah joy overflowing up to God so even if I struggle with some of the signing we can always put in the hallelujahs let's again unite our hearts as a family in prayer let us pray heavenly father we dedicate our various gifts to be used in the work of your church and the growing of your kingdom in the world Individually and together, may we share the experience of your mercy and grace with the people we meet, reflecting the light of your goodness and truth into the life of the world. We thank you, O oh God, for all who have inspired us to walk in the way of Christ. We thank you for saints of the past and for your people in our own lifetime 
who have shared the gospel's joys and challenges with us. Lord, we pray for those who are finding it difficult to respond with joy and courage to the calling of the gospel because of the circumstances of their life at present. We pray for those who face intimidation or even persecution for their faith. We pray for those enduring problems at home or through their work or their places of study or leisure. We pray for those who are experiencing illness and those who are going through the pain of bereavement, including our own royal family. We pray for those who face difficult decisions. And we pray for those who feel isolated, forgotten or ignored. We pray for those whose lives seem to be in turmoil, affected by the pandemic, by the violence of the people around them, or by natural disasters. Lord, the pandemic seems to be the thing that dominates so much of our life, but there are people living in areas affected by war and by the accompanying poverty and hunger and disease. And there are people living where volcanoes are erupting or where there are earthquakes and different things to make them anxious about their own safety and security. Lord, in every kind of human need, be near to strengthen, comfort and renew hope. Remind us that although life brings its trials and sufferings, you are with us in them all, journeying with us in your risen presence through the valleys of darkness, as well as on the sunny hilltops. And so we place our trust in you as we take the next steps on our journey of life and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is uh, hymn number 421, Our Lord Christ hath risen, the tempter is foiled.
Let us go out then. Although we can't sing hallelujah in the church, let's sing hallelujah outside. Our Lord Christ has risen and all our foes are ultimately conquered through him. And now as we prepare to go out into a new week, may we go in the joy of the resurrection, filled with hope, with confidence and love, to share the good news of his living presence with those we meet. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.